Welcome to the show, everyone. It's the Crypto Alert, broadcasting to you from New Zealand, and today we're talking about Eden Chain, programmable economy platform, or essentially an enterprise-focused blockchain platform. We're going to be breaking down just what Eden Chain does and what makes it interesting. After a massive thank you to you guys for continuing to support the channel, of course, for being part of the cryptocurrency community. Your support makes all the difference, so thank you so, so much. And of course, you do have to remember, this is not financial advice, guys. These are just the opinions of one dude talking about cryptocurrencies on the internet. Eden Chain is actually a recent ICO project. They haven't actually come to market yet, but it's a really interesting project, and I did want to shed a bit of light on it for you. By the way, hashtag not sponsored, guys. Just something that you might want to have some more information about before it hits the exchanges. So let's get into it. Let's break down what Eden Chain does. Essentially, they want to help businesses save money. This, of course, is the enterprise focus of their blockchain by providing services that would be offered by third-party providers in the regular world, we could say, and, of course, offering cheaper blockchain alternatives. They've already got two MVPs out, which I find very encouraging. They have something called eEdge, which is allowing for the easy onboarding of non-technically skilled customers to build on top of Eden Chain. And they also have eExplorer, which is kind of something like Etherscan and lets them kind of come in and explore the Eden Chain blockchain. Speaking of tech, let's go ahead and break down a little bit how Eden Chain works. So we have a three-tier architecture. So we have a base, a virtual machine, and off-chain oracles. The distributed ledger layer is based on Hyperledger. We have a dual consensus mechanism. We have something called POET, which is Intel's proof of elapsed time. Something like proof of work, but instead of having to spend a lot of electricity and hashing power competing for the right to mine the block, the block production is actually assigned randomly, so it's much more energy friendly, but still a proof of work model. The second consensus mechanism focuses on something called the median voter Ethereum. Essentially, data feeds are coming in from e oracles as a second layer of consensus. Transactions per second. Well, they're based on a network effect in Eden Chain. So the more namespace is deployed to the network, the higher the throughput of the network is going to be. By the way, perhaps this is a fitting time to point out that Eden Chain is a permissioned blockchain. So it's different from, for example, Bitcoin or Ethereum, which are permissionless. In a permissioned blockchain, you need to have the right to access it. Namespaces, the tech here, the namespace tech allows for heightened performance because essentially what we're doing is separating out unrelated transactions into different spaces and then executing those transactions in parallel. Each namespace can run up to a thousand transactions per second. One of, of course, the advantages of having a permissioned system. Very attractive for businesses, actually, by the way, having a permission system. The fees on Eden Chain are aiming to be low, 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 which is great. Working on a first in, first out basis. This is different from what you see on Ethereum, for example, where you have a situation where the minor incentive is to take whoever is paying the most in gas and choose their transaction first. It's not going to work that way on Eden Chain. They're aiming to have broad coding language, so most coding languages will be usable to develop on top of Eden Chain, and of course, also Solidity. So that means we are going to have dApps. We're going to have smart contracts, making it easy for people to come and build rich and interesting decentralized applications on top of Eden Chain. There will also be masternodes. We don't have a lot of details yet about exactly how much you're going to need to stake, for example, but there will be masternodes in the future. Interoperability is a big focus. They have what's called the 
E bridge. Now the E bridge is a layer that brings in data from multiple data sources. We have on-chain smart contracts connecting to off-chain data. And we're going to have zero knowledge connectivity to protect your data privacy. A big focus of Eden Chain as well is asset tokenization. In fact, this will be one of their key goals and features, really aiming for a wide array of digital and real world items being tokenized and put into the Eden Chain blockchain. They're also going to have an ICO incubator called Hello Eden with support for things like marketing, KYC, legal, token issuance, wallets, etc the full ICO package. Again, to help businesses that want to fundraise through this model come in and do it very easily. The Eden Chain token is of course the ecosystem's fuel. A very important thing to note here is that in 2020, they're gonna start burning the fees for Eden Chain. So we should see some Pretty decent deflation happening, assuming, of course, that Eden Chain does reach a big network effect. So it gives a good incentive for people to really hold on to Eden Chain for a long time because once those daily fee burns start happening, the supply starts dropping rather quickly. The Eden Chain team, I would rate quite highly, actually. There's a really great wealth of experience on the team in blockchain development, in software development, and in project development. The advisors are also quite well connected, which could be a real benefit for Eden Chain. The investors behind Eden Chain are also very impressive. You can see that this got a lot of attention from the venture capital firms, which is usually a pretty good nod that something good is going on over here. I think it's also quite encouraging to see the partner list growing. There's a few familiar names from the blockchain space, for example, Tomo Chain and My Credit Chain, as well as a lot of other interesting players like the Across Asia Alliance. So it's a growing partner list. Obviously, we want to see some more big household names coming in here. We, they are part of the Microsoft Partner Network, but that doesn't mean that they are an official partner of Microsoft and that Microsoft is going to be adopting their technology tomorrow or anything like that, but it does mean that they are in the partner network. So that's a definitely a good feather to have in the cap, so to speak. Let's have a look at the roadmap here. If we jump into the details, we can see a lot of its business and technical focus. The technical focus in particular I want to point out because what we're going to see as the year develops is, for example, the Hello Eden ICO platform launch happening in quarter three of this year. Seeing the first ICOs then coming quarter four of this year. But I think it's really important to point out that we're only going to see a beta version in quarter three of Eden Chain, and we're not actually going to see the main net of Eden Chain until quarter one of 2019. Now, as far as these things are concerned, that's a pretty normal timeline. Gives them about six to seven or eight months to get the main net up and running. That's a reasonable amount of time, in my opinion, and a lot of other major platforms have followed a similar path. However, quarter one 2019 is still a while away. That being said, I would also like to see some more goals after their mainnet is launched. Obviously, we'll see those updates coming in the future. They've just finished their ICO, so they will be uh, obviously looking to update these things, but we don't have that roadmap yet. Let's go over some of the concerns that I have about Eden Chain. The first is the permissioned blockchain angle. And while I think this is going to be really attractive for businesses, because you can retain your privacy, have a lot of control over things, high security, high efficiency, it's not really designed for Jane Q blockchain, your regular citizen, so to speak. This is a business-focused blockchain, and while permission will speak well to them, for a regular developer, maybe not so much. They might choose another platform over Eden Chain in that situation. But again, it is business focused. The platform market, wow, we are getting so many platforms coming out. And hey, Eden Chain is yet another 
platform, but they're bringing something new to the table. They have new features. They could really set themselves up to be a player. But nevertheless, we're getting a lot of platforms coming out. Will it be able to compete with some of the established players like Icon or EOS? That, of course, will remain to be seen as well. And while the partner list is filling out, we really need to see some massive high-level partnerships coming out for Eden Chain as well. It seems like with the connections they have already, we may see some of those really big partnerships coming out, but we don't have them yet. The Hello Eden Incubator is not quite unique. There are quite a few other projects that do ICO incubation. You might think about Dragon Chain, for example. However, considering that South Korea is looking to re-legalize ICOs, this may play very well in the Korean market. Eden Chain could be really a focal point for launching ICOs for the Korean market. If that was the only thing Eden Chain did, that could be enough to make this a highly valuable project. Time will tell though. There is no GitHub. Not yet. They promised it's going to come soon, and it's nice to have MVPs out. However, there is no publicly verifiable code available at the time of recording this video on their GitHub. Be really nice to see that come out here in the near future, just to give us a little glimpse into what they're doing and how much effort they're putting in. The GitHub's a good indicator of that. 400 million tokens were sold during the ICO. In total, there'll be 1 billion tokens at full saturation. However, only 400 million will be coming to the market in the near future. A good portion of tokens from the 60% left have actually been set aside for strategic partners, funding the foundation, and helping to bring partners and projects on board via the Accelerator program. So that's pretty good to see. I'm not too worried about those numbers. There's a lot of opportunities here with Eden Chain. The teams delivered the MVPs, which is really nice. Obviously, we're still waiting that code to come through. The Korean ICO market is going to be huge. Without a doubt, South Korea wants to get involved in this market, and they're going to. Eden Chain may be a right project at a right time kind of situation. Business solutions are also going to be big. I, I really see a future where we have many interoperable, interconnected blockchains. There's no reason that Eden Chain and Icon can't both exist in South Korea and both do very well. But those are just my two Satoshis on the matter. Thanks so much for watching the video. Let me know what you think about Eden Chain in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Come over and join us on Twitter where I share farther insights into the crypto space. Long live the blockchain. And peace out till next time.